today from M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. This is Madden NFL 21. Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens taking on Teddy Bridgewater and the Denver Broncos. They love their crab cakes and they love their football. That's what Maryland does. And we are at M&T Bank Stadium down near the inner harbor of Baltimore. The two teams emerging from their respective tunnels a minute ago to the approval of this Baltimore crowd. They're all set as their Ravens will match up with the Denver Broncos. Justin Tucker set to boom this one away. And off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. And this will make it into the end zone. And they will elect to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. And they'll be led out by their quarterback, the former Louisville Cardinal, Teddy Bridgewater. And what's a quarterback's best friend? balance I think you're right <laughs> I agree with you you know a lot of guys would say great receiver right a terrific offensive line but I agree with you balance because if you can run the ball effectively that just opens things up for guys who want to throw it and gives you easier passing lanes and easier coverages to read and they said balance will be a focus in this one yeah they don't want it all just heaped on his shoulders I don't believe I think they want to make sure they take some of the pressure off a first down throw for Bridgewater this is the tight end fan. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. A good safe pass there right off the bat. That's almost a rhythm play. That's what we like to call it. Get them into rhythm early. Something safe. Something they're confident about. Something they feel good. And once that's completed, then you just keep moving from there because the confidence elevates. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. here, second and a yard from the 34. Play action now. Bridgewater. He's got his big tight end, Fan, And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Off the play fake, Bridgewater. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. A second down throw for Bridgewater. On the slay, it completes to Sutton. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 43. 18 big yards on that one and a Denver first. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 43. First carry of the game here for Royce Freeman. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. 
Two yards, the loss, second and 12. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 12 now at the 44-yard line. Out of the gun, Bridgewater. Left side here, that's the tight end fan. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. There just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. From the gun, Bridgewater. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Calais Campbell finding his way home for the sack. I remember when I was a kid and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel so, oh. I, could pay the, so I could pay the proper price. Okay, how much were they? A dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. On fourth down, Sam Martin is on to punt for the Broncos. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Here comes the Ravens on offense and the man in charge from Louisville, the former MVP, Lamar Jackson. Allow me a second here to gush because in his college career, the only player in NCAA history to rush for over 1,500 yards and pass for over 3,500 yards in a season. And he did it twice. That's pretty good. That's really good. <laughs> Yet he only won the Heisman Trophy once. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 23. He'll throw from the gun. That's caught by the former Sooner, Mark Andrews. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. 11 yards there, first down. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. They'll run for the first time with J.K. Dobbins. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and it'll be second and very short. Now, that was an excellent run, and when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block, but the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes, so when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. On second down, a run with Dobbins, and he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. A couple of nice carries back-to-back -back here, establishing the ground game a bit. Yeah, these are bare-bones runs now. I mean, they're getting substantial yardage, the kind of yards you're looking for, right? Let's go ahead and use a cliche. Stay ahead of the change, right? Five, more, five or more yards each time, that's what you're looking for in setting a tone and getting your offensive line going. Good sign on the opening drive. On first and ten, it's Dobbins. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Come on. 
Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. And now Jackson will look to throw it, being chased out left. He'll run it, and he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know, there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Here's Jackson to throw. Over the middle here to Brown. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Well, we can talk about it like it's just a basic route, but how about the timing on this one? Lined up on the right, runs a deep in route, and how about the throw? Right on the money. Bam! Puts it right in there and on his hands. Nice completion. Really good pickup. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Jackson on the give to Dobbins. They stopped after only a yard, taking it down to the 14. Well, every now and then we have to let a cliche fly, partner. And in this case, what do they say in the NFL? Your best ability is often your availability. And this is an extremely durable kid coming out of Ohio State. Carried the ball every time they even thought about running it. Wore down defenses and able to break big runs late in games. J.K. Dobbins going to Baltimore, an absolute perfect fit. And he'll get about three just outside the 10, stopped at the 11. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. From the gun, Jackson. This will be caught at about the five. And a pretty nice tackle there, ranging up from his free safety spot as he'll stop him about a yard short. What we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost start in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. So on fourth down, here's the Ravens Pro Bowl kicker, Justin Tucker, out onto the field. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And the Ravens strike first at threes in. Well, after marching down the field, only getting three there, it kind of feels like a win for the defense. And it does. They'll go to the sideline feeling a lot better that they didn't give up a touchdown after the march against them. But if I were the offense, I wouldn't hang my head over that one. That's a good drive, and three points were put on the board. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. And this carries into the end zone. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. They'll run. This is Melvin Gordon. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. 
Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Bridgewater. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Now Charles dealing with a third and long. They'll have to try to go back to the air again and this time avoid the sack. Certainly hard to try to establish momentum when all you're doing is going backwards, not protecting the passer, and he gets dumped on his backside. Third and long now after the sack, and we'll see if Bridgewater has a response. From the shotgun, it's Bridgewater. He'll fire one downfield for... Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That was no third and two. That was third and 16, but they get the conversion anyway. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Here comes Hamler on the jet sweep. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Tackled by Derek Wolf. Remember, he used to be on the other sideline with Denver. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there, all 11 guys on defense. Diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. Here's second and nine. To throw is Bridgewater. Got Gordon open, completes it. Give him eight on the play, and that'll make it third and one. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. They'll try and run it. Here's Gordon. And Gordon's going to be stopped short. Now it appears we've got an injured Raven down there on the field. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. So they'll say no to the 50-yard field goal try. Instead, the offense out there, they're going for it. Throwing is Bridgewater. He's got a man. It's Sutton that's complete. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. The conversion is successful with a sizable gain of 13, and the decision to go for it looks like a smart one.
Now Gordon on first down. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. It was Chuck Clark coming up to make the tackle. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now Bridgewater. This will be caught at about the six. And the Broncos are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. His first catch, good for 14 there and a first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. And it's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. They'll try and punch it in. Gordon. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. Here's Gordon. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. And now third and goal coming up, the loss on second down. That just means this crowd's going to get even louder, and they'll get a little bit of extra help from the defenders as they exhort them to join them in the effort. And now can they reverse the trend on third and goal with the last two plays having gone backwards. Bridgewater now. His pass caught at the four. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. Oh, my, that's a heck of a tackle right there on third down because they had to swing it out to the back and hope that he could make a play. But let's face it, in order for him to be there and be in that position, in order to make that play, he had to read his keys and not be fooled. Excellent job in the open field. So on fourth down, on comes Brandon McManus and the field goal unit for the Broncos. From the left hand, should be a fairly easy one here. And McManus able to put it through, and that will tie us at 3-3. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. Field goals all we've had so far. 3-3 three, three now as the kick is away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Baltimore is set to take over here for their second possession of the game. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them... That's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. On first and 10, it's Jackson. Looking left side, Andrews with it complete. And he's able to get up here to the 26. That catch good for only a couple. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. 
Jackson from the shotgun. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Barreling in for the sack, Shelby Harris. Boy, he came in off the edge so quickly there. Look out, because that's exactly what it was being shouted by the offensive lineman to his quarterback because he had no chance to block him. Now after that sack, it's third and long for Jackson and the Ravens. From the gun, it's Jackson. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the nine. Von Miller doing what he does best with a sack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Here's Sam Cook now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. And a fair catch called for and taken right on the midfield stripe. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And this offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and 10. And Denver getting set to take the field. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, Yeah, right? a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting off field only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. They go over the middle, and it's complete to start the drive. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. They'll be marked inches short, no gain on the play. And that's going to lead him to fourth down. So on now is Brandon McManus. He has hit from as far away as 57, but that was in Denver. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice, an ambitious effort, but it's well short. And this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. Baltimore gets set to take the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Well, now they'll start three yards shy of midfield after that long 57-yard miss. They'll start with the option. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And they're going to have this way down deep in Denver territory. 
A big time gain there on the keeper, using his legs to hurt him. First down. So this play, you know, until recently, only something you'd probably expect to see in a college game, but running quarterbacks are certainly in vogue, and this turned into a big play. And you and I both know that for a long time, coaches worried about their quarterbacks taking too much punishment running plays like this, and they still worry about it. But when you can break up big chunks of yardage like that, it's worth the risk. Plus, you're coaching that quarterback to see those guys coming and get down before the big hit occurs. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. Jackson fakes the give and keeps it. And he is not going to go anywhere. They're going to get to him behind the line, and that is going to get us to the two-minute warning. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Taking it in from 14 yards out. And the Ravens have taken the lead. Well, this defense, so many things to worry about in the red zone area, but you'd have to almost think that Lamar Jackson running the football, that might be number one. It should be number one, and in this portion of the field where things shrink a little bit because the receivers can't run past anyone because they'll run out of real estate, you should have all eyes on Lamar Jackson when the ball is snapped and try and keep him back in the pocket. Yeah, I don't think that they were surprised he was running it there. They just couldn't stop him, and he ends up in the end zone. And it is up. And it's good. That'll make our score 10 to 3 now. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Now this will make it into the end zone. And he'll just take a seat and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. Denver's offense ready to go again. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Yeah, get a little time? closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. On first and ten, Bridgewater toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. An incomplete pass leads to second and ten from the 25. Throwing, Bridgewater. Open man, he completes it to Judy. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Bridgewater on third and two. Got a man open. It's Sutton. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Got what they needed there. The drive continues with a nine-yard pickup.
first down now, but the clock continues to move. Bridgewater again. Able to get this to Gordon. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. They'll contain him to just four, second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. To throw again on second down, Bridgewater. Oh, hit as he throws there, incomplete. K.J. Hamler, the intended receiver. And now it's third down. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Well, it's like that in just about every position. And sometimes, if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's exactly what happened there. On third down, Bridgewater. He's got his big tight end, Fant. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They'll get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. And again, it's Bridgewater. That's going to be caught by Judy. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. They'll throw again, Bridgewater. Find time to his left. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead, he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir. Able to turn that into a positive game. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. Out of the gun, Bridgewater. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Marcus Peters came screaming in on the corner blitz. Sam Martin now as he'll kick it away for the second time. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a terrific first half from the dual-threat quarterback, Lamar Jackson. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, coach, appreciate it. A one touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. The Ravens ready to receive it. And they've got the lead as well as we resume play in the second half. 
fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and ten. From the gun. Jackson. He gets this underneath to Dobbins. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 19 yards there on the catch and run. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. Jackson, he's going to keep it himself. First down and more for Jackson. And finally taken down at the 34. Another first down this time on a gain of 19. But I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Option play, and they'll hand to Dobbins. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time, forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. Second and 11 now. From the gun, Jackson. Throw left side complete. It's Andrews. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? On third down, Jackson. And he's got his man on the out route. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. Now, that's going to be a tough one to explain when they get together to watch the game film, isn't it? I mean, they had the right call, had the out route, He's got to know where the first down sticks are, yet he steps out of bounds that close. Not their best play. They're going for it with Dobbins. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. Remember, that was fourth and a full two yards. There's a big difference between that and fourth and maybe six inches or a yard. Yeah, you're exactly right, because when it's that six inches, you just fall forward and you pick it up, right? You just go quarterback sneak. But having to move bodies, that means you actually have to execute because they know what you're going to do. How are you going to make the right play call and get everyone into the right spot and win at the line of scrimmage? That's what they did there. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't. And at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. So they didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. On the option, Jackson will keep it. 
The keeper gets him seven that time, but it'll lead to a third down. Yeah, looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. This will be the eighth play of the drive here, third and four. Operating from the gun, Jackson into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Alexander Jansen, and he returns it here to his own 18-yard line. So it was a drive that had real promise here to begin the third quarter, but ultimately derailed by the INT. And that was the position you wanted to be in, coming out to start this third quarter, get a nice drive going, looking for the end zone, possibly got a little bit too greedy right there. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Check, 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 check. Following the interception, here's Bridgewater. On the slant, completes to Sutton. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. the gun Bridgewater over the middle complete to Judy and he'll be taken down but not before they work it across midfield call that a very strong gain of 24 well, that was a fun one to watch right there a nice in breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field and he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. On first down, Gordon. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They run it here with Gordon. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Throwing on second down, Bridgewater out quickly to Judy. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there it looks like a simple pitch and catch but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen now a 10th carry for Melvin Gordon and he will have a first down at about the 21 yard line Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. So following the run by Gordon, here's first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Bridgewater. Got Gordon open, completes it. Three yards the gain there, second down. 
That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Here's Bridgewater. This is the tight end fan. And the Broncos are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. Now what we're seeing, this is much better from this offense because so far in this game, no touchdown to this point. And what's usually a direct correlation? Very few explosive plays. That's been their issue. Not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off. But a nice game there for a first down. First and goal, Melvin Gordon. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Only a yard that time, second and goal. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. They keep it on the ground. Again, Gordon. Seven big yards on the carry there to get him within range of the goal line with third down upcoming. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. So on third and goal, Gordon, and he's going to run into a brick wall right in the middle of the field, and I don't think he got there. No gain on the play, and what to do now on fourth and goal. This defense continues to be good on third down. I mean, they haven't allowed a touchdown offensively. Are you saying, let's go for this. Let's try to get it in the end zone. I don't know about that because of what you just described. They've been so good, and they don't give up the big play that you would expect in downs one through three. Watch your fourth down be yeah, any different. True. You might want to go ahead and kick the field goal and see if you can figure out something else as this game moves on. The offense is staying out there. Here we go on fourth and goal from the one. To throw Bridgewater. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. KJ Hamler there to make the grab. And the Broncos are an extra point away from tying the football game. Big fourth down conversion for the score and the defense. That is a tough pill to swallow. Big time for them. How about them just deciding to go for it on fourth down and, oh, okay, forget the field goal because that looked like an easy three points. Yeah, you might have had a defensive breakdown in there, but they pressed the issue and found a way to get it into the end zone. Give them big credit for that. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. So that drive, 12 plays in length, and it ends with a Denver touchdown. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. 
I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? <laughs> the end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play -play <laughs> guy a question. <laughs> hey, you're my partner. I know you're right there with me. Takes this to the 27. Give him four yards. And they won't be able to run another play. Time has expired on this third quarter. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Ravens on third down, just one for five to this point. This will be third and six. Now it's Jackson, and that is incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Here's Sam Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. Now the Broncos offense, they get set to head back onto the field. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity, all tied in the fourth quarter. down throw for Bridgewater throw to the right here to Gordon a good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard and it's second down and we see another pitch and catch there to the running back this position just continues to evolve they become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense Throwing again on second down. Bridgewater. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Normally you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact. But in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well. Incomplete. The Broncos on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This is third and nine. To throw is Bridgewater. He's got a man, it's Sutton that's complete. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. It's Bridgewater. Looking left sideline, incomplete. That time he was looking for Jerry Judy, but it's going to be second down. So much for the best laid plans and best designed plays. That was good coverage along the sidelines. No place for that one to get in there. It sails incomplete. 
An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. To the air again with Bridgewater. Under pressure here, and down he goes. Sack back at about the 43-yard line. Calais Campbell picks up his second sack of the afternoon. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Third and long now after the sack. And we'll see if Bridgewater has a response. Bridgewater to throw it. Oh, he'll air this one deep for... It's caught inside the 25. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Boy, a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15. We always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? The guy who caught it or ran it. But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field, Pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route will run, and the football right on the money. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Now they run from the gun with Gordon. They showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you take runs like that each and every time, won't you? This is Gordon as they go to him again. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll bring up a third down. Well, I would have figured after the nine-yard run on the previous play, getting one more yard wouldn't have been much of a problem. But apparently it was. And now it's third down. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Now Bridgewater. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. They went with the dive look that time on defense. Just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. So here now is Brandon McManus in a big spot. This to break our fourth quarter time. The kick by McManus is good. And the Broncos, the first to grace the scoreboard. It's three zip. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 21. Out of the gun, he'll throw. Man open left side is Brown. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Give him nine there on the first down completion. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available 
and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Looking to throw again on second down. Jackson. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. You know, Lamar Jackson last season, the first NFL quarterback with 3,000 or more passing yards and 1,000 or more rushing yards in the same season. And we've seen both of those talents on display here today. We just saw another completed pass. And everyone knew coming out of college he could run the ball. But for some reason, we didn't analyze it throwing the way we should have. I think every time he completes a pass, he says to himself, take that, evaluators. You guys really missed the boat on me. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Seven yards, the pick up there. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Three receivers head out right, one to the left on second and three. Again, Jackson steps away. Now he'll pull it down. Five yards on the scramble, and that's enough to pick up the first. How many times have we seen this late in the fourth quarter? Because you know the pass rush is getting after him, and they get upfield, get that great push, and what do they create? Space, and he takes off. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Here's Jackson. That's complete to his running back, J.K. Dobbins. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively, but they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Jackson from the shotgun. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the ten to the seven. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. They'll run with Dobbins, and he is going to lose yardage here. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, after the loss on first down, they're going to walk that line and understand they don't have to rush just yet, but time is still going to be a factor in their decision-making. Call your play. Make sure everyone knows what they're doing. You have to score a touchdown here. You've got to find a way to cash in. It's second and goal, back to the eight-yard line now. Jackson going to look to do it himself, and he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package, and that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. For the lead, here's third and goal. They'll try and run. Edwards. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth.
So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Tucker's kick is good. And we are all tied here in the final stages. So a big kick to get this back to even. Yet now the worry is, did you leave too much time on the clock? Because another field goal the other way, that does you in. You're exactly right. You didn't get it to overtime yet. So now as a defense, you've got to think to yourself, you can't play prevent defense and just give up big chunks of yardage in front of you, but you also can't let anyone behind you. So you sit right on the line between the two, play the best defense you can, and not make it easy for them to move the ball downfield. All square now at 13-all as he sends this one away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal, and I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not out and out joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit even though they wanted the six points. And yeah, maybe war down the other defense. We'll see. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. That gets them the first down, but they've still got to move quickly here. First down now, but that clock rolling. Bridgewater to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. Now Bridgewater. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Cornell McPhee always a threat to find the QB, and he gets to him there. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Bridgewater. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. Well, instead of fourth down after the incompletion, it'll be first down roughing the passer. Coaches love their defenses to be aggressive, but they want them to be smart as well. Have to leave the quarterback alone at a certain point. A bad time for a roughing penalty, and they get the gift of a first and ten. Here's Bridgewater. Open man Hamler, that's complete. And they'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. 15 yards last play and 15 yards here this go-around. Now how about this throw right here? Had to throw it to the left sideline, and you know the timing's got to be correct on this one. Ball's got to be right where it needs to be, and it was. That's because he had great arm strength on that one, able to drive the football. Quarterbacks love it when they can show off their arms. So first and 10 now from the 30. Another tote for Gordon. He's been busy this afternoon. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as he'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Gordon. Down right around the 25. 
The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 seconds to go in half number two. This is Melvin Gordon. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Now it's Freeman, and they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock. Second and six. This is Gordon, and he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? At this stage, you've got to hustle. You've got to get back to the line of scrimmage because you're saving that time out to make sure you have a chance to get your kicker out there for the big shot. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. And his kick is good. And it'll be all smiles on Blake Street tonight. The Broncos have won it. Well, a little drama there at the end, but really this thing was already decided. The late points get scored, and then it ends on the kickoff. And I'm right there with you, partner. At the end of the game, they knew what they had to do. Just make sure you don't cough up the football at the end. Just take care of it, and victory was theirs, and that's exactly what they did. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. From Baltimore, so long, everybody.